this is our talk about uh, a class basically no, to introduction to cloud computing. So I would think that uh, most of you uh, at this point in time no, would be aware of uh, what is cloud computing, but I will discuss some more details on it and then maybe demystify you know, some misconceptions about uh, cloud computing. So for our discussion, uh, short intro to cloud computing, then of course, since I'm a security guy, we would incorporate uh, cloud computing security, current challenges, uh, benefits, and trends. And then of course, uh, summarization of our key learning points and some references. So what is cloud computing? No? Uh, let me introduce to you to uh, short history of the cloud. So in the early days of uh, computing, actually, uh, we are running no, on big computers that is centralized. In a sense, it's the early days of cloud computing where you have these big computing machines no, and then you just have remote terminals to access it. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, some of you have uh, seen that no, in the 60s and 70s. No? And about the era, it's around the uh, 80s and 90s no, in the time mainly 90s no personal computing where uh during the 80s no when microsoft was uh, developing uh part no in os no computing uh personal computing they had dreamed that there is a computer in every home and by around mid 2000s no, i think that became a reality and even now um but that became um uh, a decentralization part no where your computer uh, especially pre-internet days, no? uh, you are running it alone. Um, your applications, right? maybe your word processors, your spreadsheet, your games, no? you're running it alone on that uh, single box. And then came no? uh, the issue. No? Well, how about our data? No? How do we actually make sense out of it? How do we collect this and basically centralize it? No? So what happened was uh, virtualization came into play. No? no, Virtualization isn't new. It has been there for... Quite some time, I think 70s, there's already uh, some sort of virtualization. Uh, and my early days of virtualization, uh, I think uh, late 90s, uh, VMware, um, we have been using it. Okay. Uh, but the the powers that be, you know, like uh, at Amazon and other cloud uh, computing uh, providers, realize that, well, you have all these data centers where not all the machines are being utilized uh, 100%. No, so what if we could slice it up and rent it out at a uh, affordable rate across multiple uh clients? No, and uh they realized that when they were themselves no developing yung mga infrastructure nil nila to host uh, the uh, let's say the online web services that we have now no? like uh, the Amazon uh, uh e-commerce site uh and that became uh, the idea no, that we they could actually centralize and slice and dice and make it affordable no, to, to consumers. Uh, but that's not without an issue. No? There are challenges on uh, cloud computing, which uh, we'll discuss. No? So if you take a look at Gartner, no, um, this is was uh, as of June uh, 2022, um, the, the front runners for cloud would be really uh, AWS, Microsoft, and Google. Well, mainly AWS. Uh, they they had a huge shock of shares. Uh, Mahabal si Alibaba and uh, Oracle, but we also have Tencent Cloud, IBM, and Huawei. And there are other niche players, no, like Vulture, Digital Ocean, uh, and and the rest, no. <laughs> but yeah, if you talk about cloud computing, it's mainly gonna be AWS, Microsoft, and Google. No? so for market share, thirty four percent are actually um. Uh, as of 2022, no Q2, uh, it's really um, AWS uh, that leads the path. Azure has it uh, at 21% because Microsoft made the play that, well, uh, since we are very bad at managing our uh, Active Directory, they might as well host it no? and use it uh, uh, Active Directory as a service. And what you have on-prem would just be federated. And guess what? Um, I would say uh, a huge percent of our computing uh, Platform runs on Windows. Um, although marami kayo nakikita ng Mac, uh, but ultimately, it's just a small percentage of uh, what you see no, that operates the industry. No? Punta ka sa banks, oh, they are running Windows. Even the ATM runs Windows. Punta ka sa mga power plant, they are running uh, most likely Windows. Uh, any enterprise environment, no, most of the time, you'll see them uh, running uh, Windows. Hence, they had this huge uh, percentage of conversion no, to, to Azure Cloud. 
uh, Google, of course, well, they are in the cloud computing industry, but they are uh, 10% lang ng uh, uh, cloud uh, uh, market share. No? Then you have your ano, Alibaba, IBM, Salesforce no? uh, as software as a service. Meron silang counting uh, platform as a service, no? but uh, they're, they're 3%. You have Tencent and then Oracle Cloud. <laughs> so these are the major cloud computing model. This is uh, infrastructure as service number one. That's uh, where you are provided with basically uh, a compute node no? or a storage node. And you have to build your applications on top of it. And uh, you have the capability you know, to choose you know, and seamlessly uh, mix and match you know, what you could do and then maybe upgrade it in the future with the click of a button. Uh, what they were trying to solve was uh, the issue that um, when you want to build an infrastructure, you need a lot of things uh, to go uh, with your plan. Uh, you subscribe to the data center to provide you with space, power, and cooling, um, and bandwidth too. Uh, you buy hardware sa mga vendors, which uh, aside from bidding and specking out, uh, it would take some time to be delivered. And after it deliver, it will configure it and install no? and then build it. That takes a lot of time. So, and aside from that, yung capital expenditures no? and negotiations. So that that really uh, takes tolls no? sa IT uh, team. Uh, with infrastructure as service, you have your credit card with you, logging ka sa site, choose kung anong klaseng um, resource yung requirement mo, click, buy it, then you have your own uh, infrastructure in a few clicks no uh, maybe in a few minutes as compared to a few months and that was uh, highlighted actually during the pandemic uh, if any of you are operating an IT infrastructure then you do realize how hard it is to buy equipment no uh, i got some clients before that um hindi naman sila makareklamo no? but if they buy something uh the vendors would commit uh, 180 days to 300 days before delivery Eh, kaya ka nga mo ibili, kailangan mo na ng hardware. No? Or sometimes if may hardware failure ka, they really cannot provide it. Kasi, well, the world is on lockdown. So the production uh, rate no, ng mga ganitong hardware was really low. Um, hence, yung, yung cloud computing really boom. Kasi now you don't have to wait. You, know? you just go online and then uh, spin your your your, uh, no, your compute, no, your storage, no, your infrastructure. Next, we have a uh, platform as a service. Uh, this one would basically allow no, a uh, provider no, to, to manage and develop yung mga testing applications. Mo. So yung mga CICD platform goes uh, in this one. Yung mga low-code platform like OutSystems uh, goes with the platform as a service. No? So you're not really managing the infrastructure. Okay? Meron ka ng component na semi-manage. No? And then you're using their software to uh, provide you with your workflow to run your test and development. And then lastly, uh, this one is software as a service, no? Uh, where you're not managing the infrastructure, you're not managing the platform, no? But you just subscribe to the software, and you basically uh get no what you need, no? So I would say to a degree, no, parang uh we could put in maybe uh, uh G Suite, no, Gmail as a software as a service because in the olden days where you have hopefully wala tama ano na na on prem pa yung email nyo. Um, you have to do, buy the hardware, do the backups, uh, make sure that may uh, online your system and you have enough bandwidth. Um, and the I.O., no, the mga disk is enough to uh, uh, comp ano, uh, to compensate the number of users no, that's uh, doing the emails. So that's a lot of things to manage. No? Aside from your security and spam filtering, no? uh, you have to do it. Now, with software service like G Suite and Office 365, no? You don't have that, but you just need also to buy now license per user. No? Uh, but surprising, no? I mean, you, you still see government agencies that uh, would only be able to provide you with uh, internal email hosted, no? uh, one gig, two gig of inbox. But if you go to Google, no? if you are a paid subscriber, no? you, you easily you have uh, one terabyte of storage. So, well, uh, hindi naman nila allocate din ng mga cloud providers yun, uh, as is. No? It's, it's elastic. Uh, you use, uh, you basically consume as you use, but uh, you have that capacity in case you need it. Um, so very um, maintenance, uh, para siyang motolite. No? Hindi naman maintenance free, no? but uh, less severely less maintenance than 
what you would usually do if you are maintaining this uh, in your own uh, backyard. No? So um, next is the types of cloud computing. So while what we are mostly discussing at this point is public cloud, no, where you would uh, subscribe no? and anyone else could use it. Uh, you could also host your own cloud uh, in your own premise. No? We'll call it the private cloud where uh, if you are technically running VMware, ESXi, or Send Cloud, that's uh, basically a private cloud. No? But you still encounter the same issue with managing your own infrastructure. No? Uh, you provide the space, the cooling, the bandwidth, you monitor the heat, you monitor the I.O. If there's any uh, problem with the disk, but you, you buy and replace it. So main maintenance and uh, IT team, no? uh, your IT team would still be uh, managing this uh, on your own. No? Hence, uh, a lot of uh, organizations want to move, migrate to the cloud. But migrating to the cloud, uh, the public, no? doesn't necessarily mean that you don't need IT. No? You still need the IT, but you, they now need to retool themselves on how to uh, operate public cloud. Because it's a totally different animal as compared to when they were maintaining uh uh, this uh, platform on, on on their own data center. No? So they need to scale up, basically. Hmm. And it's not, um ano sabihin nila, madali, or ano, parang, hindi, parang SSH mo lang yan. No? That's, that's totally the wrong approach. Kaya maraming nababirich na cloud uh, instances because of that uh, mindset, no? uh, which we'll discuss in a bit. Um, and we've also seen this, no? na increasing yung hybrid cloud. They have their own on-prem cloud, but they are also communicating with, or they have their instances in the public cloud. Well, the best uh, ratio I could see is uh, maybe uh, 2080, wherein 20% 20 is private cloud, yung compute uh, capacity nila, no? but 80% is still on um, the public cloud. And a huge uh, reasoning on it is uh, about data sovereignty, no, na, uh, some of their data ke, supposedly you know, cannot be put into uh, another jurisdiction. Hence, they have to host it in country or onshore. You know? So that's one of the reasons why it's my hybrid. But if wala daw ganon, they would move uh, pro probably uh, full you know, uh, public cloud. So in regards to security, you, know, you always uh, see this. You know? uh, let's move to the cloud because it's more secure yung public cloud. But that's not officially the case, no. Uh, if you go with infrastructure as service, no, like mga AWS, uh, EC2, no, or mga other compute instances, they have this what they call shared responsibility model, where the customer actually uh is in charge, no, of the OS the identity and access management and the customer data that is on you. So if you don't encrypt your system, if you don't uh, program you know, your, your system well, then it has some vulnerabilities and it gets breached, you cannot sue Amazon for that. No? What Amazon is relying on is yung infrastructure behind, the software to do the virtualization, the storage, the database, no? and the hardware. If the breach came from that side, then they would be the one responsible for it and accountable. But this becomes a problem. And daming misconception that I have this old system, uh, medyo clunky, hindi na natin alam paano i-maintain. No? Let's just move it to the cloud kasi mas secure yung cloud. That is catastrophic. I assure you, pag minove mo ang untested and unsecured system in the cloud, it's gonna be hacked big time. No? You, you are responsible for that software. You're responsible for that customer's data. <clears throat> so, there's this. So, okay, on, AWS yan. Paano si Azure? Azure has something similar, no? the shared responsibility model. So they also identify ano lang yung sakop ni Azure, ano yung sakop ni um um ni customer, no? Like for this one, your software as a service, diba? if you could actually see here, no, information is still under the responsibility of the customer. Yung mga mobile device and PCs, of course, that's yours, no? Uh, if you lose it, someone steals it and gets your data, well, you cannot sue uh, uh, Microsoft for that. Uh, even accounts and identities, no? Kasi sabi na iba, it's nahak yung account namin, no? Kasalanan ni Azure, kasalanan ni AWS. But yung pala yung password ng user nyo is password one two three. So, uh, how would you blame yung uh, provider for that? Hence, they have this table to delineate anong sagot nila. Now, as mentioned, no? If 
the breach happened dun sa application system ng cloud um, that is beyond your control, then that is the responsibility of this cloud provider. No? <clears throat> So in regards to security, you know, there is uh, what we call CSA, Cloud Security Alliance, uh, Cloud Computing uh, Control Matrix, where this is a cybersecurity framework no, uh, for cloud computing. Uh, and mayroon siyang spreadsheet to make it easy for you. And it covers 197 uh, control objectives across 17 domains. And if you have a cloud computing platform and system, this is a good tool to use to validate if secure by yung deployment natin. So, from uh, audit and assurance, application interface security, pati business continuity and operational resilience, and others, no? So, haba, hindi ko naisa-isa hin. Um, you could have some checks and balances kung saan ka nagko-comply and you'll be able to identify and present to management na, di ba, out of this cloud uh, control matrix, ito yung mga supported natin and meron tayo now. The rest, we need resource, no? Maybe uh, funds to purchase that license para meron tayo. And people also to operate that. No? So don't forget the people part. No? You might have all the money in the world and buy all of these solutions para mag-comply dito. Pero isang tao lang yung nagmamanage, medyo uh, not, 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 not a good ratio. No? <laughs> you need, you need uh, people to manage this. So, and um, one pitfall that I always see a lot of organizations is na meron silang current IT team na bihasa sa on-prem no? uh, and they did not skill them up for cloud computing but they migrated to cloud computing and ang sabi lang is ah, kaya nyo na yan parang, parang dating gawin lang no? uh, without tooling yung mga sysads, net ads natin no? that, that, and even devs no? that should not be the case uh, that is a uh, formula for disaster no? so you need to tool them up uh, you might need to bring in some other guys that has experience in cloud computing to teach them and maybe help maintain but now you have your uh um human resource issue no? baka may mga conflict na inggitan diyan pag ganun <laughs> parang oy yung mga cloud computing team na yung bagong favorite ng uh, ng management well that's because this is the the way to go and maybe yung mga old sys ad and net ads natin na uh, didn't actually care to learn this no hopefully they are uh, um realizing that they need cloud computing skills so they have to be uh, tooling themselves no? or level lang up their skills and there's a lot of free resource no? from Azure, from AWS because they also want adoption. So they they, they have this free resource. They have this training and certifications too for architecture, uh, management, security you know, that you could go on and uh, train and get certified. And they don't cost much, but and it's they have very good uh, materials for it. So for the class no, in Ayora, I want to get young students uh, of the course, uh, I want to get their feet wet no, uh, in cloud computing. So there are free uh, instances that you could subscribe to, no, to Google Cloud, AWS, and Azure. So at least for sample of activity for our class, no, we want them to uh, subscribe, get their instances up and running. And then uh, this for AWS, no? Mm. Have here some short one slider on how to create no their free Azure account. I uh, sorry, uh, AWS account, and you could use it for a year. No, so in case you haven't seen this, no, you could have your own EC2 instance for a year, uh, and it's free. It's a micro instance, no, but it gives you enough uh feel no on the latency, how to log in remotely, how to see the dashboards and in operation. No? Uh, so AWS gives this up uh, to you for free. Uh, and uh, you would be setting up basically um, some services no? like um, uh, WordPress uh, with some database and that's going to be part of our uh, uh, course requirement. So next part, what's the challenges in cloud computing? Well, we have this list, no? security compliance, vendor locking, data migration, and banning. And let's break it down. So for cloud security, again, we need to get away with the mindset that if it's cloud, it's secure. No, um, there are there have been a lot of instances where uh infrastructure as a service, data as a service, even software as a service, no, that has been breached. And for the most part, it's not the fault of uh the platform provider. There are some instances where yeah, uh they were breached via the platform uh provider, but the best part of that is they are regulated, heavily regulated. They need to resolve it quickly. 
and they need to inform everyone of what happened. So they have this transparency part. Not unlike, uh, as we know, no, pag internal company na breach, uh, maraming mag, ang mindset is, uh, okay, linisin na lang natin, ship, ship it under the rug. No? And that's actually, uh, should not be allowed. No? Meron tayong, lalo na kung may PII involved, meron tayong reporting duties to the National Privacy Commission. But yeah, uh, moving to the cloud or what we call create and migrate, no? yung may on-prem ka, i-zip mo lang, ship mo to cloud and instantiate it there. Uh, those systems were designed for cloud. It might work, might be secure, but it might not be very efficient on how to use the cloud environment. So uh, for the most part, it has to be redesigned. It has to be broken up to make use um, efficiently, no? infrastructure and cost-wise for cloud computing. The ICT, well, they had uh, cloud computing uh, cloud first policy. No? And this was uh, four years ago pa na, na they voiced. No? So a lot of the government infra now merong cloud first policy. Uh, if may data sovereignty uh, issue, of course, hindi uh, naman yun yung sinabing AWS cloud first. It's not based cloud first. No? So you could build your own on-prem uh, private cloud pa rin. No? But ang... ang mandate ng DICT, even way back 2022, cloud first policy tayo. And paano kung compliance? No? So AWS at least, no, uh, they have this considerations for compliance. Sabi, oy, compliant ba tayo sa BSP? Kung bank tayo? Well, AWS says na, yeah, for Philippines, BSP 982 workbook, uh, we are compliant and you will have this documentation here na you could present to management. Paano kung ISO certified ba sila? Diba? Or GDPR compliant no so AWS at least na from AWS to present to management na oy uh, compliant tayo for this uh regulator re regulation and certification body um uh, next challenge is vendor lock in no uh, if you are very uh accustomed to AWS medyo mahirap mag move to other cloud provider no? like uh Google Cloud or Linode because iba yung interface niya iba yung API and iba yung uh, offerings no so you will have this issue for vendor lock-in. So you need to choose uh, the provider no? uh, uh, wisely. And I've seen organizations no, na may AWS sila mainly and then they realize na, okay, yung Active Directory natin kailangan na sa Azure na. So they would have sa, uh, some of their instances and in workload no, running on Azure because of that requirement, but still, they're mainly operating in uh, AWS. And what they realized was, okay, in case there's any issue with uh, AWS or there's any issue in Azure, we need to have a backup. No? So what they did was they have this hybrid cross-vendor uh, synchronization wherein uh, AWS gets data from Azure and Azure gets data from AWS as a sort of back, uh, backup no, for business continuity. In case Azure goes down, they would be able to still operate within AWS uh, instances uh, and vice versa. And it's not 100%. No? You've seen news uh, in the past few years na no? nagdadaw yung isang service but binabash natin yung cloud. Pag gano'n, no? oh, sabi mo, hindi 100%. Sabi 100%, no? pero hindi naman nagdadaw. I assure you, mas mabilis mag-up ng service yung mga cloud provider than our on-prem on team. No? Minsan may outage tayo, inaabot ng San Diego kasi may nasirang hardware or UPS tapos hindi natin mabili yung parts. No? So, but kay AWS it's, uh, or Azure, no? that would be catastrophic for them when one week sila down. So the, typically, it's just a portion of their service and they have to bring it up uh, very quickly. And after nilang ma-bring up, they have to disclose ano yung nangyari. Um, I'm sure you have these service providers na nag-down, tapos bumalik yung service, pero walang explanation. No? <laughs> yung tawag namin sa network world, yung ano, restored by itself. <laughs> now, it, it, it will not happen. No? Someone did something to take it down and then bring it back up tapos wala silang disclosure so nakakainis yun but uh, this cloud provider cannot do that kasi makawala yung transparency nila so they have to uh, be, come out no, kung ano yung nangyari next problem is data migration no? uh, moving to the cloud uh, it's not as easy as uh, you think no? especially if you have petabytes of data no? moving to the cloud would be a problem kasi well bandwidth sa Pilipinas it's it's uh it's very expensive uh, y yung cost to do it yung integrating across that system yung latency no uh that is a problem with during the early days of cloud computing here even now uh, i've seen organizations uh crawl their uh, no, cloud migration kasi 
So, misakas, well, meron kami 2 petabytes. No? Shipping it across our uh, 1 gig gigabits per second bandwidth, it's not, uh, it's not gonna happen anytime soon. So, luckily, no, for some cloud providers like AWS, no, they would give you an option to ship yung hard drive. So, never underestimate the the, the bandwidth no, of a hard drive flying on a plane, <laughs> papunta sa destination. Uh, you know, uh, so, they went with that option. No? They migrated their data to hard drives na encrypted. Kasi, of course, you don't know. Pwedeng in transit, mawala yung disk. No? Tapos, kung unencrypted yung data, then you have a problem. So, they have this encrypted disk. They ship it out. They had AWS loaded on their data center, which you don't know where. No, it's unmarked and uh, unmapped. Then, hindi ba alam ko nasa yung mga data center set up for security reasons. No, um, and they would load it on the on the platform. Just bibigyan ka na lang ng blob for decryption and loading sa system. So that is an option. But well, there is also a cost involved. So again, if you have a lot of data, then this is gonna be expensive. No, bandwidth and uh, shipping wise. What about now benefits no, for cloud computing? Well, use cases, no, future use cases natin like 5G and autonomous vehicles, no. Uh, we need hybrid ecosystem no, to where to process that data and real-time responsiveness, no. And that actually became a problem, no, since uh and daming data ang gina generate ng mga endpoints natin like cell phones. No? Dami natin gina generate na data. If you see the cell phone actually, um so that became a problem the latency and responsiveness. No? Centralization before, na nag-decentralize using personal computing. Now we have cloud to centralize again. And they realize the issue. Now we're now trying to move some computing power to the edge and calling it uh, edge computing with in, re in relation to the cloud. No? So ngayon may, may connection pa rin. No? But this this is going to be ongoing. Actually, yun second topic natin for the next class, the edge computing. But yeah, maturity use case, we're also doing streamlined analytics. No? Kasi for cloud computing, they are built for big data analytics. They are able to harvest a lot of this data. And you could correlate no, and analyze this data using yung mga large GPU instances, uh, personalized uh, knowledge no, for consumers. Mo. You could easily crunch this data because you have it. no, And you have the computing capacity if you need. Of course, nothing is free. You have to buy it no, from the providers. And yun naman yung gusto nila. More data, more things to analyze, more revenue for them. Also, flexible pricing models for cloud. No? Uh, basically, you eliminated yung delivery, yung CapEx, no? and uh, setting it up in your data centers. Uh, you also minimize the personnel. You only need a few highly skilled individuals to manage this. Uh, and it might look expensive, no? but if you take a look at na per hour you're charging ng cloud, ng, uh, cloud computer, uh, computing providers, no? you could even reduce it to half if you buy, let's say, yung mga tiyatawag na reserved instances. Uh, if you know that you have a compute instance that would last for at least a year, but you could reserve it for a year and they would give you a 50% off uh, or roughly that amount. No? So you actually could bring down the cost. Because for, let's say, AWS and Assure, they are assured then uh, you'll be their customer for at least a year. So it it gives them, uh, um, what do you call this, um, benefit na assured uh, captured audience ka na basically at that point no? so they would give you the best rate okay so yun din uh, take a look at for that pricing uh model na if you're going to run cloud computing or if you have cloud computing instance if you're experimenting then yes okay lang yung per hour no and if you don't need it you shut it down to to uh minimize cost but if you have a stable system you're going to run it for multi year no you could check out reserve instances para mas mura yung uh, uh operational expense mo as mentioned kanina, yung regulatory compliance, uh, if you need it, most of these public cloud providers would be able to say kung compliance sila or hindi. If not, then you will need the third party to uh, assess. No? But for the most part, uh, I assure you na these cloud computing providers know their market, know the regulatory requirements. Most likely, they would be uh, compliant to what you need. Okay. So trends... The last part, no, I've seen, I uh, mentioned din kanina, multi-cloud, no, where you are subscribed to multiple cloud providers and you even have your own on-prem. No? You need to mix and match those according to your need. And they have this problem that I uh, encountered on a lot of enterprise. No? Okay, man, we're putting all, everything to the cloud. Paano kami nangyari sa cloud? Na, let's say, 
one on one instance kasalanan ng vendor no we could lose our business okay that's a valid ko uh reason or what if na hack yung cloud namin tas dinilit lahat di ba how could we recover uh, in a few years back no you could see enterprise people backing up to the cloud now i'm seeing the trend of reverse where cloud environment is being back up on prem <laughs> In case may mangyari yun, no, may ransomware or cyber attack, no, they still have their data on-prem and they could re-instantiate it if needed. No, so, uh, another use for uh, multi-cloud. No? So, it gives them flexibility, redundancy, and resilience. But aside from that, of course, yung, if you want the best domain uh, active directory no, for your Windows environment, then of course, you need to do Azure. No? If you need mga Linux cloud compute environment, data analytics, you need AWS. And you could link them up. Ultimately, it's an IP communication between those two. No? So no, nothing uh, nothing magic there. They could talk to each other. I mentioned this uh, a while ago no, where uh, we are now on the cloud computing uh, era, no, but there are instances where IOTs no, need to be able to react fast. They need to be able to compute and sense this information. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, for edge computing, uh, I briefly mentioned this uh, a while ago that uh we uh realize no the need for uh compute no uh on near these IOTs near the endpoints no for them to be able to decide no if let's say computer vision they see a person no they could process it and alert na kagad na may person dito sa area na to and then send a notification alarm so low bandwidth high uh, real near real time na data analytics unlike yung standard natin now no na stream all this data to the NVR and then the NVR would process it and then after a few minutes madedetect na, uy, may tao pala doon. No? Baka, baka tapos na yung boxing at that point. No? So, they want compute uh, power no? on, on the edge. And as mentioned, no, this is, I think, if not next week, next next week, no? ito yung uh, lecture ko, the edge computing part ng uh, Asia Open na lang. Okay. Uh, serverless computing, so aside ng uh, infrastructure, platform, and software, no, uh, I wouldn't say this is new. No, it has been there for a few years now. In function as a service or serverless computing, or in AWS terms, now yung mga AWS Lambda, Google Cloud Function, and Microsoft Azure Function, where you don't have instances na server. It's a mini code, uh, and you pay as a use. No, so ve very few cents per per call basically ang bayaran dito, and you could have a very complex uh function, no, but per call lang din yung bayad mo. So if hindi siya ginagamit masyado, then you minimize your cost. No? So, so next, we have uh, AI and machine learning. So very good on cloud computing uh, on this uh, uh, trend, no? yung AI and machine learning because a lot of this uh, system no, needs a huge GPU uh, cluster. And the problem with GPU is it's very expensive. Uh, dahil inubos ng mga uh, Bitcoin uh, <laughs> miners to mga, ano, mga GPUs na to. But you could have instances na to sa cloud. And if you just want to compute it na um, seasonal, no? you don't have to buy all this equipment. May mga GPU instances like si AWS and Azure and Google Cloud that could help you uh, process no? your uh, learning environment no? uh, or lear learning data no? for your uh, machine learning and AI ano, components. Okay. So with that, uh, we just have some few few key learning points here, no? Um, on what we discussed, no? Uh, uh, yung uh, history of cloud computing, some uh, categorization, no? Private, public, and hybrid cloud computing. Yung cloud computing service and models natin. Uh, and if you want to comply with security, no? There is CCM with sixteen domains across hundred ninety seven controls, no? So you could check that out. We've discussed yung challenges sa cloud computing and trends no? uh, in cloud computing. 